behalf of our little team, I'd like to welcome you to our presentation. Um, I'd like shortly to introduce the rest of the team to you. There is Manfred Kraft and Arndt Holzermeier, and they brought in their marketing and operations research experience, and we were strongly supported by the Renania CEO, um, Frederick Palm, who's sitting over there and who will talk to you at the end of the presentation. We're quite honored to be here today. So we all hope that you have an enjoyable and rewarding session, and then let's get started. What is it all about? In the mid-90s, Renania had a huge problem. We had decreasing number of customers, sales, and profits. And we solved that problem with a model called dynamic multidimensional modeling to optimize our direct marketing activities. That moved us up from a weak number five position in our market to number two. Then we reached a new area in our company's history we called period of growing pains. Due to acquisitions of competitors, there was not only Renania, out of the sudden there was a Renania group facing multi-dimensional customer problems with three different catalog brands. The problem was that our good working model, the MLM, was not designed to handle that. It was designed just for one catalog brand. So we gathered data and experience and finally we developed an enhancement we called dynamic multidimensional marketing, short DMDM, to optimize multi-brand customer relationships. Our presentation is structured as follows. First I will give you a company overview, then you'll see how we broke with mail order industry standards and develop the general idea behind the MLM. And after that, Arndt will take over to explain you the DMLM approach. At point four, Manfred will give you, show you how DMLM turned Renania around. In points five and six, our latest enhancement, the DMDM process and its impact will be explained. Afterwards, you hear a short summary and some words from the CEO. Let me give you a short rundown on Renania. From the center of the Rhineland, we sent 10 million catalogs to 600,000 customers, 400,000 shipments to over 100 countries per year leaving uh, our fulfillment center. Um, Renania is selling books, mostly delisted videos, CDs, and DVDs, and our target group is defined as well-educated consumers who are looking for reasonably priced products. There is no contract between us and our customers, so our customers are absolutely free in their buying decision. There's much, not this, fierce competition in this particular market. There are bricks and mortar bookstores, there are book clubs, and there are online book retailers. And there are hundreds of catalog companies. Here you see the medium and last size, uh, sized competitors. You find Renania's positioning in the yellow circle. And please notice the competitors next to us, Accenta and Mail Order Kaiser. Those were the ones to be acquired in the years 2000 and 2001. Today they belong to the Renania Group. Renania was founded in 1946. In 1998 we started as a week number five. Due to the success of DMLM, we moved up to number two in only three years. Back in the mid-90s when DMLM was developed, Let's have a look what's accepted practice in mail order industry. There was a myth I'm sure you all have heard of. It's called less is more, which means focus on your best customers, focus on your best products, focus on your strength, concentrate upon where your money comes from. You might ask what's wrong with that. We think a lot, we will show you. In direct marketing, this led to a myopic optimization that tries uh, to reach the maximum success out of single marketing campaigns. There are different possibilities to measure success, but one factor they all have in common is marginal sales must exceed or at least be equal to marginal costs. This is taught everywhere worldwide. And if you do that, you have high mailing profitability. But you lose active customers because you focus only on the best of those. And therefore, you lose annual sales, and under certain circumstances, you even lose profit. 
Speaking about circumstances, in 1994, the boom before and after the German reunification was gone. It was completely over. And concept, good and booming economies now failed. This is what happens very often. When the boom is gone, the concepts won't work anymore. And very recently, some US mail order companies made the same experience. Uh, Montgomery Ward, Fingerhut, or Spiegel might tell you some stories about that. But let's stay with Renania. We had highly profitable campaigns, but within four years, and you can see that here, we were losing one third of our active customers. That's the most important asset of a mail order company. We were losing one third. And therefore, we had less sales and less profit, and you can tell this is a sign of a crisis. And this is when the MLM came in. We were thinking outside the box and said, we don't really want to maximize the profit of one single campaign. We want to maximize the total profit of all our campaigns over a planning horizon. Where does this lead to? This ends up with campaigns that are less profitable, but you gain more active customers, more annual sales, and even more annual profit. And we thought, that's a deal. And we consequently transformed these thoughts into a model we called DMLM, which delivers, delivers the profit maximizing frequency of campaigns, the profit maximizing size of campaigns, and the profit maximizing customer segmentation. And it gave us one major insight. You can only reach the profit maximum if customer segments with marginal sales lower, and this is very important, lower than their marginal costs are included. This means you lose money at first to reach the maximum profit. Uh, as I went with this result to the former CEO, I was thrown out of the office. Uh, he said, pack your DMM something stuff and come back with a better idea than that. <laughs> and uh, so we continued shrinking. And I had to come back with the same idea to the same office, but to a different CEO, <laughs> because <laughs> the old one got fired. And uh, the new one sitting over there uh, said to me, OK, let's give it a try. And this resulted in something wonderful, more active customers and more annual sales and more annual profit. So we learned our lesson. Only more is more. And now Arndt will tell you how the DMN process will work in detail. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In what follows, we will explain the key ideas behind the uh, dynamic multi-level modeling approach, which has been applied to several catalog brands separately. Thereafter, we will discuss how the DMLM approach ex is extended to support the integration of multiple catalog brands. First of all, the DML model provides answers to three important direct marketing questions. First, when and how often to mail. Second, in which volume to mail. And third, to whom to mail to. The DMLM approach operates at three levels as shown in this slide. So, uh, the first, in an elaborate testing phase, a series of mailings was launched to estimate the elasticities for order size, purchase frequency, and customer response. For example, customers responded very differently when the mail was received during the week as opposed to the weekend. Also, Renania observed a diminishing effect when customers were flooded with catalogs. We call this level one analysis of the direct marketing approach that determines essentially the profit maximizing number of mailing campaigns and the target day of receiving catalogs by the customer. Second, in the level two analysis, the pool of customers needs to be segmented. Uh, in Renania's case, customer segmentation was based on the actual buying behavior measured by the recency of the last purchase. Renania then must decide dynamically whether to include or to exclude particular customer segments from the next mailing campaign. That is, it must select the profit maximizing number of mailing addresses to be utilized. Third, in the level three analysis, the firm can further fine tune its mailing strategy by analyzing whether customers who belong to a particular segment and this is especially true for the segment of highly valued customers that made a purchase recently, should be demoted and consequently treated in a special way. This decision can be based on a chart analysis, as will be explained later. For example, an inactive customer who places an order 
moves up immediately into the segment of active customers that is, in our case, segment number one. However, the customer may become inactive again, and thus, at the end of a pre-specified review period, a so-called reactivation package may be sent to stimulate additional purchases. The same type of review and reactivation procedure can be applied to other segments as well. Level 3 analysis primarily curtails overall mailing expenses to one-time buyers and the opportunistic buyers. In the DMLM Level 1 analysis of the firm's customer database, a decision has to be made about how many mailings should be conducted in the following 12 months and at what given day of the week should the catalog be mailed to the customer. In Germany, the postal service is very reliable and thus delivery lead times are highly predictable. Please no note two things at this point. The DMLM model can be applied to any type of direct marketing activity. And second, the length of the planning horizon is chosen such that it captures the effects from repeat buying and reactivation of customers. A series of mail tests were uh, checked, uh, sorry, a series of mail tests checked which day of mail delivery to customers and which minimum interval between mailings generates the best results. Days of delivery to customers Monday through Saturday as well as time intervals between mailings, which is 180 days, 90 days, 45 days, 30 days, 14, 7 or 1 day, were tested in depth against each other. Taking into account the result that bi-monthly mailings of catalogs generates the highest profit potential, it bet can be concluded that 25 mailings a year is the optimum frequency for Renana's customer space. Based on the optimal number of mailings per year, as determined in the level 1 analysis, in level two, decisions are being made about how many customer segments should be contacted in each mailing in order to optimize expected profits over the entire planning horizon. In Renania's case, the house list has been segmented into three pools of customers based on the time since the last purchase. That is, the focus is on recency only as opposed to frequency or monetary value of orders. The main reason is that recency is a reasonably good predictor for the customer response rate. Customers of the first segment purchased within the past 12 months, customers of the second segment purchased within the past 24 months, and customers in the third segment purchased even less often. A Markov-like process is assumed whereby, given the stimulus of a catalog, there will be a migration of customers from all lower segments to segment number one when a purchase has been made. However, there are demotional transitions of customers that did not purchase for an extended period of time. In addition, the model takes into account that names can disappear for a variety of reasons, death being one. Furthermore, the pool of potential customer contacts is periodically replenished through list rentals and ads. Let me now illustrate to you how the mailing optimization, that is the selection of customer addresses for the next mailing, is being determined. The overall flow of customers has been shown on the previous slide. The customer data analysis revealed, however, that the rate of demotions for each customer segment is fairly stable throughout the year. Consequently, the assumption is that a fixed number of customers in each mailing either place an order and thus move up into the segment of active customers, or do not purchase and thus either remain in the segment they're in or get demoted into a lower segment. The same assumption does apply to new customer accounts as well as the, to the closing of accounts. Thus, for ease of exposition only, we have assumed a constant number of customers being added, respectively dropped per mailing. In what follows, we assume that Renania utilizes three customer segments as discussed earlier. The first set of equations, which is here on slide uh, number one, bullet number one, then presents the expected flow of customers for a single period and all segments. It is straightforward to extend the equations for future mailings. The second set of equations, which is here item number two on the slide, then states the total number of customers in each of the three segments over the entire planning horizon, that is, after n mailing campaigns. In the third step, we estimate the expected sales of each customer segment, that is, the average order size times the estimated response rate. And in the fourth step, the expected profits across all three customer segments can be determined by subtracting the cost for printing, mailing, order fulfillment, and merchandising from the expected revenues. In the fifth step, and this is very critical and uh, quite innovative, the optimal threshold level S star is being determined, and S star is the minimum required sales per customer per segment per mailing. This value captures the trade-off between continued catalog mailings and the expected long-run profitability over, uh, of reactivated and repeat buyers. It can be shown that in the optimum solution, the marginal revenue of the last segment to be included in the next mailing is less than the marginal cost of the catalogs. Finally, in the sixth step, the number of customers addresses to include in the next catalog mailing is determined. 
That is, one either chooses segment number one only, segments one and two, or all three segments. This process of selecting customer addresses is being repeated just prior to each mailing of catalog utilizing updated parameters. Up to this point, in the level two analysis, customers have only been classified based on the recency of the purchase. Alternatively, a method typically used in the segmentation of customers' databases is the RFM method, with a focus on three factors such as recency R, frequency F, and monetary value of orders M. In addition, the child algorithm can be applied in order to partition the customer base into even smaller segments. Besides the standard RFM factors, our model utilizes also information on past purchases, promotion response, and contact history, as well as behavioral, demographic, and geographic data. Thereby, one can divide currently active and inactive customers into smaller groups that should continuously get the regular mailing. This implies that sales is greater than S star, the threshold level. In a case that S is less than the uh, threshold level, groups of customers that should get a so-called reactivation package with special offers to recover or to reactivate the customer relationship as early as possible are, possible are sent out. And also, customer, groups of customers identified that uh, on average do not achieve significant sales and thus should not be mailed to at all. This way, the mailing costs are being curtailed since customers that receive a reactivation package will not get the standard mailings and unprofitable customers are being excluded. Let me now turn it over to Manfred. Good morning, and thank you, Arne, for the short introduction. Uh, I'm the marketing guy, so I have to sell the uh, impact of uh, DMLM on the company. To understand the uh, effect, um, let me point out that Renania was in big, serious economic troubles in the uh, late, seven, uh, late 90s, uh, especially in late uh, 1997. And as you can see here, uh, the numbers in uh, 95, 96, 97 were that Renania actually shrank compared to the uh, overall market while we still had a market growth. And uh, beginning from 1998 when we uh, introduced the model DMLM, we uh, at Renania outperformed the market by far. Just to uh, give this uh, also numbers, the uh, overall market had a growth of about 3.7% and Renania achieved an average sales growth of about 10%. Another important success metric, and uh, Ralf already pointed that out, is the uh, size of the uh, active customer base. And actually, uh, Renania lost customers in the late 90s, uh, about 11.5% from January 97 to April 1998. But it took only four months to regain uh, this loss of customers based on uh, the recommendations of DMLM. And uh, to show that, let me introduce here the blue line. When we intro introduced DMLM, but just level one and two, and not level three. And as you can see here, the new approach helps to optimize um, the mailing frequency and the choice of customers to contact. However, there's a kind of a wear out effect because we try to utilize what is in the customer base. And uh, there are some kind of limits of growth, so to say. And uh, actually in 1999, uh, Arndt and I joined the uh, DMLM team at Renania and came up with more ideas how to optimize it even further, so to say. And uh, the extension of uh, DMLM, in uh, inclu including the uh, third level, uh, helped to uh, even uh, build the active customer base more. So we had a kind of growth rate of about 50% of active customers as compared to uh, April 1998. But uh, there are more numbers that I can show you here. Um, although the customer base could be grown by more than 50%, uh, the growth rate of sales was a bit slower, uh, lower because uh, when you reactivate customers, the uh, reactivated customers, uh, on average, s uh, buy less than uh, kind of the uh, former, uh, more valuable customers did. Um, another number that is, uh, I would say, most impressive is how profits changed over time. And keep in mind, the only thing that changed in uh, 1998 
until 2001 was the application of DMLM. So everything else more or less was kept constant and uh, profitability increased dramatically. But there's one number, 1998, when we first applied DMLM where we had profits of only 46% uh, as compared to 100% uh, in 1996. So what's behind? Um, because of the uh, serious troubles that Renania faced in 1996 and 1997, in 1997, the former CEO decided to uh, send out mailings only to the most valuable customers. And this exactly led to this myopic optimization where you short-term uh, increase profits, but uh, long-term lose customers. And um, so it took some time to regain, and we invested in less valuable customer relationships in 1998. And this is why we, we so to say, burned money in a, in a way. But uh, in the long term, as you can see, um, the profits were much, much higher than before. So additional growth of profitability could even be achieved in 2000 and 2001. And keep in mind, in 2001, the German economy also went into kind of a serious period. Um, September 11 did not only affect the US, but also and especially the mail order industry in Germany. Just to remi remember that we had uh, fear of anthrax, and this was the same in, in Europe. Um, the project itself did just cost about $7,000. And uh, I would say it earned its money within weeks, if not days. The uh, main contributions of DMLM should be summarized. Um, what did it do, the model, to Renania? Uh, I would say on the one side, it helped to uh, optimize several mailings over a longer planning horizon. And this, again, helped to turn around the company. I mean, if this development would have continued, from 1996 and 1997, Renania wouldn't exist, I would say. Maybe uh, Rolf Elsen and uh, Frederick Palm see it differently, but at least there was a big, big trouble. Um, the core of DMLM is to break direct marketing tradition, this current tradition of myopic optimization just to send out mailing, mailings or uh, letters to those who seem to be most profitable. Um, what we did here in our new approach is it pays off to send out catalogs even to people who, from a short-term point of view, seem to be not valuable enough to receive a mailing. But we have some economies of scale effects and also the effect that we can reactivate inactive customer relationships via additional mailings. Well, and after applying the MLM, Renania by far outperformed the market and uh, what was even strong enough to acquire its major competitors. And also this is a consequence uh, of this uh, superior model. But after the acquisition, uh, Renania became second largest in the market, but also faced new problems, new challenges. Uh, DMLM was developed to optimize mailings over a rolling horizon for a single brand catalog uh, company. And now we had three companies, and questions were, for example, could uh, DMLM be directly applied to all three companies independently, separately? Should even Renania kind of merge those two companies into one? Should it keep three brands? And uh, this is a set of questions that I would like to be answered by Ralf Elsner, who will take over again to explain, to explain this challenge. Thank you, Manfred. This is the one he has forgotten. DMLM fails to handle several catalog brands. So, as he pointed out, we had much economic trouble. We had three different brands, and in Germany we say we stood there in short trousers. We, we didn't know how to handle it. So, we stored, after the acquisition, we merged the data of the three companies into one single database. We had no experience to control and to optimize several direct marketing brands. We had no optimization model because the one we had was only one dimensional. And we weren't even sure whether it is right to maintain three brands or to combine them into one super catalog. However, we considered the super catalog as our last resort and in case that the free brand strategy would fail. Very soon we recognized that running the DMLM circle for each brand separately was insufficient. 
Since cross-brand correlations and interdependencies like cost effects and multiple customer relationships had to be considered in an overall optimization process. Here we have a two customer example regarding the recency of the last purchase. The rate of transitions within and between each brand depends on the brand related response rates for each customer segment. In the left corner, you see customer yellow. He is currently in segment number one for brand A. He is in segment number two for brand B and has a closed account for brand C. And in the right corner, customer blue has a closed account for brand A is in segment number three for brand B and is not a customer of brand C at all. You can easily see that these customer relationships are multidimensional. In this case, we have three dimensions. We were wondering what happens to the elasticities of single brand customers who become multi-brand customers. Our concern was that these transitions would have a strong negative impact as the number of received catalogs would increase from 25 to 50, from 50 to 75. And here we made another wonderful experience. We learned that there were customers who reacted very negatively on getting one more catalog of a single brand, but had no problem at all with getting 25 additional catalogs from another brand. This was great. But unfortunately, that wasn't, this wasn't true for all our customers. So we found out that there were several brand elasticities for single brands, for single customers, for each brand and for the total elasticity for all brands. And now Arndt will show you how we integrated these multidimensional aspects into an overall optimization process. Uh, let me now summarize the main assumption of this extended approach of DMLM, which we call DMDM. First, the available mail potential, which we call XMP, is the number of different customers we can mail to. Now, this is strictly less than the sum of the mail potential for each brand. So, for example, if we have one million customers in each brand, we could potentially mail out three million catalogs. Now, we're, the mail potential is less than that. Why? Because uh, the customers, not all of them, qualify to receiving mails from the firm's entire portfolio of catalog brands. Second, the total of the actual mail volume X over the entire planning horizon is not bounded by this mail potential, since each customer can still get all mails from all brands. Third, the larger the mail volume X, the larger are the economies of scale and scope in printing, order fulfillment and mailing. And observe that the cost function of one brand is no longer independent from the mail volume of the other brands. Fourth, the total number of catalogs N a customer receives over the planning horizon is at most the optimal mail order frequency of each brand. Fifth, and this is also the part where we integrate the different brands, the level one analysis of the DMDM approach shows that um, we have to take into account a total elasticity over all brands, as was explained earlier. In mail order business, one typically can expect a negative non-elastic customer reaction towards an increasing number of mailings. The higher the total number of campaigns, the higher the probability of a more negative elastic impact on the average sales per customer and campaign. Therefore, in case of multiple customer relationships, the total elasticity regarding sales has to be considered as stated here. That is, in some cases, the customer value can be optimized by curtailing the aggregate number of mailings received over the planning horizon. Now, um, on this slide, we will highlight the main differences between the simple DMLM and the multi-catalog brand approach called DMDM. First, at the level one analysis of the modified DMLM approach, we utilize the total elasticity to determine the optimal number of campaigns for each brand and customer segment. Second, at the level two analysis of the modified DMLM approach, the customer segments to be included in the mailing for each brand are determined under explicit consideration of economies of scale and scope. Consequently, brand-specific threshold levels S star are being determined that are being utilized further in the level three analysis. Third, at the level three analysis of the modified DMLM approach, we see the major differences and improvements in performance. Remember that the main purpose of the level three analysis is to separate active from inactive customers. For the DMDM approach, a distinction between brand-independent and brand-related variables is possible and extremely effective. In addition, 
A powerful predictor beyond the brand-related variables is the multiple customer characteristic measured by the various combinations of customer catalog brand relationships. This measure can be understood as a mail order affinity indicator. Finally, cross-brand relations cor correlations and interdependencies are integrated in this overall optimization process. Based on all of these variables and the minimum required sales levels S star for each brand, the two main decisions are being based on when to reactivate a customer and whether to increase the number of customer brand relationships from one relationship to two, two to three relationships. In a nutshell, the DMDM approach utilizes information on customer response to three distinct brands. This allows the firm to better target customers and greatly improve its resource allocation decisions. Let me now turn it over to Manfred. So the results guy is back. Uh, what we observed after the acquisition of Accent and Mail Order Kaiser was that the active customer base shrank. After the success story, so to say, for the uh, single catalog company, Renania, the Renania group simply had a problem here. Um, but uh, when we introduced DMDM and optimized uh, customer relationships across brands, we uh, observed that uh, the active customer base again uh, grew. And um, especially as you can see in February 2003, both Renania and Accente achieved a long-term high number of active customers. So we could transfer uh, single brand relationships to two brand relationships, two brand relationships into three brand relationships when it was meaningful. And um, another number that I want to show you is, I mean, this could just be the consequence of a growing German economy. Council, Chancellor Schroeder would be very happy uh, about uh, this result, but it's not true. The economy is still in a, a very serious uh, kind of a recession. And the mailing industry in, in particular, so the red columns here show the uh, development of the uh, sales volume in uh, book retail. And the green columns are uh, the numbers for the Renania group. And you see that there is uh, quite some growth. So let me summarize because we also want to hear the uh, CEO's voice. Um, I would say that DMLM certainly was an important step to turn around Renania as a company and to make Renania group happen. However, uh, given the fact that our initial model was built to optimize single catalog, brand, uh, single catalog brands, the new situation after acquiring both Accent and Mail Order Kaiser um, motivated us or urged us to develop an enhancement of DMLM, which we call Dynamic Multidimensional Marketing DM. DM. And this new approach is able to handle um, single brand relationships and to develop them into multi-brand relationships. And uh, consequence that we observe of applying DMDM is uh, oops. it uh, enables a more accu accurate customer segmentation. It also helps us to uh, prolong customer relationships and also to activate customer relationships who wouldn't be valuable if uh, Renania just was a single a catalog company. I want to clarify this major difference uh, between DMLM and DMDM by using a well-known legend that you, I would say, are familiar with, the six blind man and the elephant. Um, when we uh, started with DMLM, we were like one of those wise men, and we touched the elephant from one angle and uh, had the idea that this is a rope, this is a snake, or whatever. And after acquiring Accent and Mail Order Kaiser, we got a more complete view of the customer relationship. And we are talking a lot about uh, earning a total customer insight. And I would say, uh, let me just uh, cite two of the uh, verses of uh, a poem that was uh, once written down by John Sexy. It was six men of Indistan to learning much inclined, who went to see the elephant, though all of them were blind that each by observation might satisfy his mind. And the second last verse is the key takeaway. And so these men of Indistan disputed loud and long, each in his own opinion, exceeding stiff and strong, though each was partly in the right, and all were in the wrong. And uh, we believe that after the acquisition of uh, Mail Order Kaiser and Accente, we, so to say, also acquired other wise men. And we had more uh, perspectives to understand the customer relationships. 
So uh, finally, I'm very pleased now to introduce to you Frederick Palm, who was the CEO and the mentor, so to say, of DMLM and DMDM, and he will share his insight and position. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor for us uh, being part of this year's ISMS Practice Prize competition. As the CEO of the Renania Group, I'm here today to testify that all what was described here by our team happened as presented um, and how important the results of their work are for the success of our companies. In direct marketing and in the mail order industry, the um, optimization tool DMLM and its latest enhancement DMDM um, represent what we call a breakthrough technology. The consequent application of this technology transformed our business from being a turnaround case to an industry leader in sales growth and profitability. Let me especially highlight three points. Um, first, every customer address we are mailing to is chosen by the process of DMLM since 1998. And I can tell you, a choosing address is a core of business for a mail order industry. Um, second, the impact of the model moved us from a position number five, week number five, in uh, uh, our market to a strong number two. And third, the success of DMDM applied since July 2002 shows the ability to enable enhancements and to adjust the model to new conditions. And finally, for the future, we feel comfortable today when we're thinking of future acquisitions or creating new business through spin-off catalogs because we know we have a powerful proven technology to handle the complex situation of multiple customer relationships in a multi-catalog brand environment. Thank you for your attention and I would like now to join the team to answer your questions. Good morning. Uh, perhaps I should say good afternoon, uh, given where you're from. Um, I have a couple of questions about the model, and Ed is, has some questions about impact and strategic uh, value of the model. So let me start with uh, my question. The first one um, is, it's not, it's not clear to me how you classify somebody as inactive. Should somebody be inactive in all three catalogs uh, before that customer becomes actually inactive? And related to that, uh, it's clear that if there's no customer overlap across the three catalogs, uh, then you can uh, generate a lot more value by mailing more catalogs to all three. But then you don't learn from the uh, same customer being in, in different catalogs. On the other hand, if you have too many uh, people in the, you know, uh, customers who are receiving multiple catalogs, uh, then there's not much leverage on the upside. So mm. what, what is the, you know, in your assessment, the type of uh, overlaps that we need across the catalogs to make this kind of thing work. Do you want to answer this? Yeah. Um, the first question was how we um, do the, the separation between active and inactive customers. Um, at first, we did it very easily. We said people who haven't ordered 12 months in one catalog brand are for, thi for this particular brand inactive. We had some enhancements from a doctoral student from Professor Kraft to do that individually. Um, this has, has a very good result, but it's very complicated. So right now we stay with uh, the easy <laughs> description of, of inactive and active customers. So that it's, it's easy, 12 months, no buying. He's inactive for this particular brand. And you, you are absolutely right, we have customers uh, multi-customers, they buy in either of the three brands and right now it's about 15 or 20 percent of our best customers getting 75 catalogs, so 25 of each brand and um, as we started with DMDM it was about 10 percent or even less, so we, we doubled this and 10 uh, percent was enough 
to settle the, um, to adjust the model. And 20% is even better. And hopefully we're getting 30%. So we don't see there any limits. May I just add a few words? Uh, what we did, we did a comparison of this heuristic that uh, Ralph just described and the NBD Pareto model, uh, who can be used to uh, determine the uh, activity or inactivity level of customer relationships. And the heuristic is quite good. So the uh, effort to uh, apply a huge, very complicated model uh, is not really paying off. That was uh, our experience with the uh, doctorate student who checked that. Uh, the second question I had, again, from a modeling point of view, is uh, do you have any assessment of the relative contribution of the three stages uh, to the performance of the model? It seems to me that the first stage, where you determine the number of mailings, is really affecting the cost of your operations. Whereas, for example, the third uh, stage, where you're trying to select the exact, you know, good customers, you're affecting the response rates. Mm -hmm. So do you have any sense of where, where you're seeing the real uh, impact? Is it in the first stage, second stage, third mm -hmm. stage? Yes. Um, it, I guess it was 1995 that we had only 18 mailings per year. And today, as we described, uh, as a result of this uh, first level analysis, we have 25. We raised that number stepwise, and uh, we reached 25 in 1998. Um, but it, it had not such a big impact as the size of each campaign. So I guess I would, I would say maybe the overall impact was about 20% of having more uh, campaigns and about 50% was about the size of campaigns. And the, the, the last 30% was about getting out of the size the right customers with uh, the um, trade analysis and the third step, approximately. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, my questions all revolve around the notion of, of competition, because it, whether we say less is more or more is more, we're still trying to optimize or how efficiently we're using our resources. But does this make the individual catalogs more impactful relative to uh, other, other companies' catalogs? And the other question would be, what if your competition was using a similar optimization? How would that affect uh, mm -hmm. the situation? Uh, we have in the, in the backup one slide that I want to show you. Uh, we also compared the uh, kind of productivity of catalogs over time. Uh, so the uh, quality, the effectiveness of catalogs did not really uh, explain uh, the uh, changes that we had. I mean, it's kind of overlapping with the results that we've seen, but it doesn't explain actually the uh, extra gain that we get from applying DMLM. So it's not the productivity of the catalogs that is really behind. So it's the selection, it's the size of the mailing, and I would say, I mean, we marketing people know this, it's about that's the size of the budget and the allocation of the budget. And the allocation effect very often is much more powerful than the kind of perfect uh, size of the budget. And this is uh, very similar. So what is the ball up in, in the consumer dynamic that makes this effective? Uh, these are the economies of scale, okay. uh, first of all. And these are um, uh, the more profitable, long-term profitable customer relationships that we gain. We, uh, we have heard in the, in the session before when to pull the plug. This is exactly the same thing what we do here, when to pull the plug to a certain customer or customer segment. And what we did, and we said, pointed out, more is more. We said, we don't want to have uh, more short-term profit but less sales and less customers. We want to have more of all of three of them. And what we, did, what we did here was checking out if, it, if there is a trade-off in mailing more to more people um, and the long-term profitability. This is what we mean with more is more. We want to have more in, in every point. Is that your answer? Uh, this is to the two academics on the team. Uh, it seems to me that one way to test the value of the model uh, is to compare business as usual with, uh, you know, uh, your model on a, some two separate groups, control group 
mm -hmm. test group type of situation. Uh, you have not done that. So is there any reason why you did not do that at least on a small scale? May I? Yes, you okay. <laughs> we did. We did that. Uh, we did that um, on the first step, as Aunt po was pointing out. We, we mailed to certain customers. We, we divided several um, segments and mailed to one part segment two times to one, four times to one, eight times, and uh, everything else was the same. So on this stage, we was very academic, tested it through. You're right in another point, as we said, okay, let's go to 25 catalogs overall, and now let's check out more um, act, uh, more customers to go into these mailings. We didn't test that. We, we tested that only in comparison to the to the mailings before, and we had 20, 50 years uh, experience in that case. So we could see how was it last year, how was it the year before, and how is it now. And um, Frederick Palm said we we let most of it unchanged except these model. So we don't had a head-to-head -head comparison. We had a comparison between some years. Yeah, one, more one, question. one audience question. Um, do you have any plans to go into the DMDM business, somewhat like American Airlines did with the Sabre reservation system? <laughs> um, well, um, not to reveal yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, as I mentioned, we are, we are quite happy to have this tool. We feel comfortable. Um, um, looking at the future, and uh, we are on a growth path, and we are, we are planning to continue that, oh. and um, through acquisitions or spin-offs to all possibilities on the way. I would just like to say a few sentences about also applicability in other industries, which we didn't cover here. Mm -hmm. But um, we have had some uh, requests from other companies from the same industry who are very interested in this. Actually, uh, Rolf Elsen also won a dissertation prize in Germany for that. Uh, from the Direct Marketing Association in Germany. Um, and there's also a lot of interest from other uh, industries such as telecommunications, for example, and financial services. And so the we, Post. And the German Post, yeah, which also tries to uh, get hold of uh, what is behind here because they're very much interested in if they help their customers to send out more mails because it's more pro uh, productive, they earn more money. Uh, so th we see a lot of potential here, and uh, it's just a matter of lack of time that we can't apply it to any industry in the world. But uh, I would see there's a lot of uh, potential behind. Once again, thank you very much.